Yo, 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 what is going on, COD Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today I got a hot one for you, really in the sense of figuring out how exactly is it that we should be playing Call of Dragons. And I'm going to kind of talk about this from somewhat of a kind of a big macro perspective, which is that the game really, when you compare it with some of its predecessors, even if you're looking at somebody like Rock, IK, SOS, LM, uh, these other kingdom builders. But more directly, if we kind of look at the more rock to cod comparison, the way that you go in and prepare for what are you getting out of cod, right? Because the fact is, is that there's not a KVK in the game right now. There is not any type of, you know, Ark of Osiris or, you know, any type of alliance or AVA like league. And that's not to say that those things may not come in the future. And then the kind of direct, I don't want to say counter, but the opposite way of looking at it is that they do merges, right? So uh, when you're looking at kind of the, the contrast of KVK, so because of that, right, with their taking four kingdoms at a time and ideally merging them into one, the thought about not really having a home kingdom becomes less of a priority when you're looking towards building it for something like KVK. It's not to say that the home kingdom is not uh, important at all, but the way that you're approaching it can be different than when you're looking at it in a way such as when comparing it to Rock. So for COD, that's what we're going to talk about today and touch on how to actually go in and get the most value out of your kingdom uh, for you as a player and what are some of just the best approaches? So before we get started, as always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you sub, like, or ring the notification bell. And if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up the Discord. You can find a link to that in the pinned comment description right down below. Also remember, new videos are coming out every day at 14 UTC in-game time, uh, which is also going to be outside of the game, 9 a.m. Eastern and 14 UTC. You can find right up here. So obviously, by the time I'm recording, it's a little late. <laughs> uh, I digress. With all of that being said, diving in, I, I want to just come out and say that you know, I still think kingdom, I, th I still think unifying kingdoms is a good approach, right? Where you are trying to go in and just, and just create a stable environment where it's not just some form of lawless PVP, right? Because that's just how you essentially incur player drop off that much faster, right? Nobody wants to kind of be forced into PVP. Um, that's just a basic player psychological trait and characteristic, right? Nobody wants to be constantly attacked and their farmers constantly raided and their city constantly hit and them just having no realistic opportunity to progress and develop at any type of decent rate, um, right? It's, it's almost as though people want, players want to be able to progress freely and then choose, right, uh, when and where, that they go out and conduct PvP. That's really kind of the bread and butter. And being able to find solutions to that and finding ways that you can create that type of environment, that's really the sweet spot. And so <clears throat> when I think about it, right, the idea of how am I starting in COD? Do I want to just go in as an individual player and I'll just join an alliance and then, you know, whatever happens, happens essentially? Do I want to go in with a full alliance worth of players, maybe gather 40 or 50, and we'll just go in as one alliance and we'll just try and, you know, keep our core intact and outlast through the seasons? Because that's also the thing you have to consider is wh how are you sustaining yourself through seasons? When we look at SS1 as an example, Kingdom 4, right, at this time has been the longest lasting and sustainable kingdom uh, where they've kept the most amount of alliances intact, right, for the longest period of time. Uh, with, and again, that's just a small sample size for the first four kingdoms that got merged into SS1, which is the kingdom we're in now. And so, you know, I think they had a good recipe. And it's, 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 and this is the thing, right? They didn't even come into Kingdom 4 as, a, as an organized group, right? It was just more of individual alliances that just all kind of came together and unified. So the core isn't necessarily as strong as if you came in together already prepared and already had visions and, every, and, and um, goals in mind. But they still were able to do it. So I think that's great to see. And then... That, I think, is really more of a, a bit of that recipe there when it comes to COD. It's because there's there's the chance that SS1 might even see another merge, right? Who's to say that SS1, SS2, SS3, SS4 may not eventually merge? Who's to say that SS1 and maybe SS2 
eventually we'll see emerge going into season three right so you, you'll take basically kingdoms one through four you put them in ss1 that, that we're seeing now and then you take kingdoms five through eight and you put them in ss2 and then that's their season two right and then season three is okay well we're, we're gonna merge ss1 and ss2 for season three and then maybe they maybe they stop right it's just we don't know are they gonna keep doing merges or not i think the fact that we're seeing a merge makes me believe that if you're able to go in and you can unify your kingdom and you can get everyone on the same page and then you go into that SS1 merged server, you know, really unified, that's great, right? If you can do that, that's ideal. However, at minimum, right, going into, like when you think about Rock and how many jump projects there are, I truly believe that with how COD is currently because of the merger system, your back, your backup, my, my little one, uh, your, your backup is going to be having a group, right? Going in with multiple alliances that are just on the same page. And that is your nest egg, right? That's your safety net. Because if you do that, then you at least have that at minimum, even if things in the kingdom, right, may not be going, you know, in any type of an ideal way. And so that will allow for you to carry over your core group of alliances and players, regardless of what happens, uh, with a higher chance of doing that over to the next season. Um, and then that way you can either decide, hey, right, we're, we'll just be a group of alliances that's just kind of up for hire. We'll just kind of go with whomever. Or, you know, maybe you are able, like I said, to be in a position where you can continue playing with your kingdom's alliances and trying in, because season one really for the most part is a good opportunity to communicate with other alliances, build relationships, build rapport, build bonds, and then hopefully, if you're lucky and fortunate enough and you can get everyone on the same page or many of the alliances on the same, like the active strong alliances on the same page, right? And you can kind of funnel players upwards so they can work their way into active alliances without kind of hanging out in like a number 30 alliance, right? That just might not necessarily be enjoying the game to the fullest extent. Those are things that are great to do. And so I think for me, when, when I look at it now, you know, my safety net is, okay, I need to have, you know, as many alliances as possible in my project before we start, um, at least, you know, however many we can get, but at least have as many as possible because that should be my safety net. And then if we're in a fortunate enough position, whichever kingdom we land in, and we're able to kind of see eye to eye on things, dope. If not, then that's okay because I have this backup and things can change when you go from the first season to the second season. And I think that's the thing to really look for. It's not necessarily what happens in one season, it's what can happen in the next season, right? As long as your group and your players remain intact and together and loyal and wanting to still be a part of each other's presence and group, Every player is going to keep developing. You're going to keep getting stronger, and your power average will increase as well from all of your players. And then you'll notice that the landscape for how something played out in one season can be totally different. Like, you could get totally crushed in one season, but then the next season, totally dominate. And that, I think, is the exciting part, right? And, but, but because of that, it's important, I, I believe, where... You just need to have a good group. You have to have a good core group of, of players and or alliances because that's something that's going to carry. Now, sure, you might have the, ro not going to say rogue alliance, but you might have like these solo alliances that are just, you know, maybe full of spenders or you just have a good core group of alliances that's maybe a nice healthy mix of free to play and spend. And they're just kind of for higher alliances, right? Some, I, that's kind of what I also see the, the market uh, developing into where you'll have this mix of different uh, sides, I guess, if you will, right? You might have the group of an all spender alliance, and so they're just for hire, right? Uh, whoever is going to offer them the best, or you know, whatever side they think they're going to do. You might have a group of two alliances, a group of three alliances, a group of four, five, or six, right? And you might have all these different situations. You might even have an alliance that just wants to go around and do nothing but PvP, right? Especially once you get to the merged kingdom, going into season two. So. That to me, I think, yeah, you know, obviously you're going to get, you know, all different strokes and folks, but it is interesting to think about how, you know, th all those options and all those varieties can be present within COD because of just how the merge system is playing out and just being different. So with that in mind, that is pretty much it for me, right? This is just kind of more of a, a thought, an out loud thought session, think tank moment, if you will. 
And uh, again, I, I really would love to hear your thoughts, though, right? This is from this is what I've kind of analyzed so far uh, from playing COD uh, and comparing it to Rock and a few other Kingdom Builders, and it is just different. But I do think that difference does present some exciting facets and interesting approaches to the game. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. That is it for me. As always, until next time, I will catch you later.